Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. Russell, good to see you again. Good to see you, Vikram. Um, so I thought in t- today's uh, chat, we'd sort of take a sort of 10,000 foot view because a lot of the times we, you know, we're able to sit and dive deep into any one specific therapy and talk about the pros and cons there. But if you are someone that is experiencing hair loss and you, you the fundamental thing that you want to do is you, you probably want to be able to know that you're being given a good advice, get on with the treatment, and probably then move on and be able to live the rest of your life. And that's certainly what yeah. we want for our patients that's as right. well. Absolutely. Uh, and sometimes I find, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, is that people get really stuck in the weeds. Uh, you know, people will come and you know, sometimes they're super well informed and they'll be quoting this and that and you know, really worrying about over well informed. Well, yes, exactly, and s- certainly worrying about what is could be the minutiae of of what is going on, as opposed mm. to looking at the the big picture. So, I thought probably for today, and it would be nice to sort of you know uh, pick your brain about this, is to sort of look at things from a more holistic perspective, and go right. What are the big things that we should be considering, or how should we be approaching, uh, or you know, all of the. Uh, if you're someone who's losing hair, how should we be approaching it to try and minimize the clutter, so to speak? I think the first thing that's, that strikes me that I see so often um, over the years is that the, particularly the young men that are coming and operate in panic mode. Yes. All right, so they come yeah, in, they're, why, they're traumatized, yeah. and they want to do everything. All right? Now, the problem is that that's not the way human beings work. Okay, And so what I've learned over the, over the time is that if I recommend one or two therapies, uh, they are often want to add another three or four yes. on the side. Because they want to throw the kitchen sink That's at the it. problem. They want to do everything possible to do it. And the problem that arises from it is first, the, it makes it impossible to work out what's doing what. Yes. Number two, they haven't factored in how long it takes to see a result. So I can't tell you the number of times patients have told me that I tried X, I tried Y, and it didn't work. And I said, well, how long did you try it for? And they said, six weeks. And I said, well, whoever told you that treating something for six weeks was going to make a difference? I yes. mean, if the hair falls out today, it doesn't grow back for three months. Yes. Right? The hair cycle works on years. It doesn't work on months. It works on years. And treating it in weeks makes no sense because you're never giving it a chance. So if we just, just to unpack that real quick, if we look at the average hair cycle in, in, in men and women, the hair does this growth phase where it grows for anywhere three between to three to five years. years. Yeah. yeah, three to five, six years. Uh, and then it sheds. Uh, it Painlessly. falls out. Yes, yes right. it falls out. And then it remains, there's this dormant period for two, three, uh, four mm. months. And then the new hair starts to pop through and then you have to wait for it to grow. And then this, the circle repeats or oh, the cycle repeats. And that cycle is controlled by your genetics, by the way. So it's, you know, it's not that you can manipulate it naturally because yes. that's, your genes do that. Yes. And that's why you can get some women Women especially, women have a longer cycle. Some women can grow their hair there. Some women can grow their hair down to their, you know. Waist. uh, Yes. Um, So we have to take into account that cycle when looking at at therapies. And so, again, it's not a week's, it's a month's thing. So the the education point for the patient is that, you know, nothing that we've ever used works works effectively in under four to six months. That's pretty much the minimum time frame. And what I say to them is that I want you to come back in six months and I don't expect you to be better and you shouldn't expect to be better, but I just want to know you're not worse. Yeah. Right? Because that's like that's the, the first stage. The window of opportunity for the best time to get you know, some result is between six and 18 months. And we've, we know that when we've done studies on the different medications, uh, that the effect kind of levels off around about two years. So whatever you get two years in the therapy is about as good as it gets mm-hmm. unless you do something else, all right? So what I, what I try to do um, is to try and if there's blocking required, we do some blocking and I do some stimulation at the same time and I leave it at that. And the reason I want to leave it at that is because the second, you know, I mean, the first big rule of success is to be compliant or be consistent, yes. right? So that, that if you just laps in and laps out like so many of our patients do and they they go on for a few months they go off for a few months they go on for a few months they go off for a year there's never necessarily any good reason to do it other mm. than they just 
don't see any results and get a bit discouraged and then think it gets worse and think oh, I better try it again. So it, it's the consistency is the number one rule that is going to be a tip you know, for you to have an effective treatment. You have to be consistent with it. Number two, compliance, right? If you, you don't muck around with the treatment program that you've been given, right, be compliant with it, right? So it's, you know, it's one thing to take something every day. It's another thing to take the two things that we gave you every day versus one thing mm -hmm. occasionally and one thing regularly, right? So be compliant. And compliance comes down to simplicity, and doability, if that's a word. Yes. So basically, the more things we put into the mix, the less likely the mix is going to happen, right? So if I say to them, here's five things you can do, um, the chances of them doing all five of them effectively and consistently being compliant with it is just goes down to almost zero. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, you've got to slow them down because they're impatient and panicking Yeah. and tell them these are the top two things that we start with because these have the best documented results so far. And I need you back at six months, but I need you to do this for mm. six months. You know, and I say to them at the 12 month mark when we've had a chance for it to improve, there's only three outcomes that are possible. You're the same, which yeah. means we stopped it. You're better, which yeah. means we improved it. Or you're worse, which means we haven't yet got control of it. And that's the time we make decisions about whether we add something else in to assist in the process. And I think one of the things that I found as well, really to get buy-in from the, from the patient is really sitting down and explaining to them what everything is doing, what your treatment modality is trying to achieve so that they understand, right? And so they're able to go, okay, I get why. You're not just saying, here, take this, take this, take this and take this and then see. I don't know why I'm taking, but the doctor told me to take it. Because I've seen that, mm -hmm. right? I've seen a number of people that have come and uh, spoken to me and gone, I'm on this, I've been on this for, you know, this, this length of time. So I asked the folk, do you know why you're taking it? Not really. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to be able to, to impart that because they then understand and take ownership from yes. that and be able to, uh, to understand you know, and, and be a team player in you know, what is you know, a team approach to try and get to the outcome. Right. I guess what, one of the things I want to ask you about that is you, know, you, can, you can make an argument about, okay, we want to do fundamentally, you know, one of the guiding principles of what we want to achieve is we want to give you the smallest dose of the least number of things that are going to provide stability. That's yeah. the sort of mantra. Well, there's a cost thing. factor. There's a, yeah, a long term, uh, you yeah. know, complexity factor. Yeah. And, you know, they, often we have young people that don't have a lot of money. Yeah. So, you know, like giving them an expensive treatment program or a treatment program that forces them to come into your office all the time. Yes. Right. That makes no sense because that just complicates things. So that's where I have my concerns, you know, about things like you know, mesotherapy where you actually have to do yes. it in, in the office or PRP where you have to do it in the office and it's expensive. Yeah. And there's and we can get results that, that really should mimic at least what mesotherapy or PRP can do without them having to come to the office at all and to be able to do it at home and do it cheaper. And that's yeah. that's really, you know, what are the things that are going to stop you, you know, is the is are they going to be consistent with it? Are they going to be compliant to it? Are they going to be able to afford it? Um, you know, and yes. does it make them feel like they have to be constantly coming to see you? And so when someone tells you, oh, look, Russell, well, I am worried because you're right. saying, let's just say, for example, you're telling them at the end of the conversation, and I want you to be on some, uh, a stimulator, say minoxidil, and I want you to be on a blocker, say finasteride, mm -hmm. uh, and then let's see how you go for six months, and then we can track that and then make a decision. And what, are they, what, what what's your sort of talk, you know, uh, viewpoint when they go, well, look, there's a chance that I may lose ground in that six months, right? Well, Isn't it better to, yeah, you know? So what I, what I do in that situation is I say, them, if you can't wait six months because you really are worried, yeah. then come back, all right? But the reality is um, the figures for what we have are that at least 85% of our patients will stabilize, mm. at least 85%. So you've got a six out of seven chance that this is going to work, yeah. right? Not a one, not a one in seven chance. A six out of seven chances is going to work. So you're going to trust the process. Um, but if you really are, um, you know, uh, concerned, you come back and we'll have another look, uh, because uh, some people are just 
way more agitated about it than others, and, and uh, they again, they equate shedding with hair loss, mm. which may or may not be the case. Yes. Um, and as I say to them, as long as you're shedding long hairs, I can live with that, right? Um, and you've got to understand what normal shedding is, which is 50 to 100 a day, because one of the first things they do is they reduce the frequency of shampooing because they notice it when they're shampooing their hair. And so they will go from shampooing every two days to shampooing every four days and notice there's even more hair falling out. Well, that's four days worth of hair loss, that's why. And so it, again, it's part of this education process, as mm -hmm. you said, to the patient. You have to bring them into the tent to, get, to give them some basic information that doesn't make them misinterpret what's going on. And then I think it's also, you know, looking at the, the bigger picture because one of the things I say to my patients is this is a long-term process that we're talking about, yeah. right? You're, you're fighting the battle, not just the war. So if you, if you throw out all your ammunition uh, on day one, because you're taking a long, you know, approach, a long-term approach to it, are you painting yourself into a corner when if you're going to, if you're due to experience a shed, you know, five, ten years down the, the track and you don't have anything, you know, right. left to Plus, to plus you've got the add. issue of side effects, right? Because if, they, if they've got four or five different things going on and they get a, a reaction to something, you know, are we sure which we know what they're reacting to? Well, and that, that's, that's true. That's, that's complicated. But also, conversely, right, if you've got, four, if you've given them four things, right, and then at the end of the six months they're stable, then what do they're you do? They're locked in. They're locked in because which one was it? Was it 25% on each one? Was it 50% mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, item A and, you know, uh, the mix? So, so my approach here is to say to them, you know, like, let's do this for 12 months. Yeah. Okay, and I usually can get them to do that. And then let's reassess it 12 months and see whether we feel there's any need. Because, for example, we could increase the dose of minoxidil. Yeah. Uh, we could um, add in laser therapy. We can do all sorts of things that, again, trying to be non-invasive, trying uh, you know, microneedling. Um, you know, and they'll do that themselves anyway <laughs> because it's such a popular therapy. Yeah. You know, that, uh, the patients don't even tell me they're doing microneedling until right towards the end of the consultation right. that they're doing right. it as well. Um, it's such a popular thing to do at home. And I, I, I'm okay with that. I really am okay with it. Uh, than doing it, um, but I just want them to, you know, try and be, that they understand the logic of what you're trying to do. You're trying to do stepwise assessment and make sure that we aren't over complicating it, and that yeah. we actually are able to get biofeedback, if you like, from the patient as to what's going on uh, with our observation to make sure that we're doing as little as possible to solve the problem, because you know they're young, right? They're yes. healthy. They're not used to taking stuff. In, in the main, um, and you know they have to take it until they don't care, but they're gonna care for a while. Yes. It's a long-term thing. So just to recap, you know, fundamentally as a, as a tip, uh, be consistent. Yeah. And be, you know, look at it in a, from a pragmatic perspective, really streamline your approach. Well, it's, it's a bit like the KISS it, approach, right? Keep it simple, stupid. That's right. right? Yeah. That's, that's what it is, right? Yes. So we try and keep it simple. Make it affordable, make it doable, mm. right? And then those patients, I mean, in my, in my practice, in your practice, as we've seen over many years, the patients who get the best results are the ones who are compliant yes. and are consistent. Yep. It's, it's the absolute number one feature uh, that we see time and time again you yes. know, with the people who come back in that are good at being consistent, are good at being compliant uh, and don't get, uh, fall off the wagon, they do best. That's very good. I think that's that's really good advice in a in a nutshell. And certainly, if you are uh, suffering from hair loss and you are taking medication, understanding that there is a sort of a real urge and an impetus to make sure that you're you know, like we said, throwing the kitchen sink at the problem, but trying to take a more measured approach is probably really going to be more effective in the long run. Indeed. So I hope you uh, found something interesting that uh, uh, tips from us from uh, to manage your hair loss today. Thank you for watching uh, The Hair Loss Show. Don't forget to subscribe and like uh, if you like what you hear. And we look forward to talking to you again.